Yeah, I mean, we decided to start the show right exactly when everything has changed at yeah. this point. I mean, the NIL era is in full swing. Things are getting out of hand in some opinions and, and going the way that others thought it would for the longest time. So it's such an interesting time from the high school recruiting aspect, from the transfer portal aspect. You're having so many schools that at one point had some disadvantages in recruiting that now have big money and are immediately players again, like Miami basketball, I yeah. think, is the best example of that. So Young Turks has been going through some transition lately with you now continuing the show without your brother. What do fans look forward to with the show in this new era as the peak of football and basketball season kind of approaches? Yeah, we're changing up the way we've done things. For the longest time, it was my brother and I, and, and we've been to so many Maryland games. We've gone on the road so many times and had that just really natural connection to this place and to this school. And we've added in some of our interns to it that are here on campus that bring a little bit of a different perspective. Obviously, being students at this school, understanding a lot of things that I think the fans have questions about, like why every student decides that they want to leave after the first quarter or halftime. Right. And just bringing different content, trying to bring more recruits on, get that perspective on why people pick Maryland, why why somebody from local or even outside the area would come to play at Maryland. That That's what we're trying to bring to the show. And it, it's been going through a transition period as I have kind of taken up a different role. I'm the voice of Jacksonville University men's lacrosse now. So Congratulations. Taking a different different path towards covering Maryland as I, you know, of course, increase my own career in media and, and try and bring in students at the school to give that perspective. Oh, no, this is how we lost your brother. Are we going to lose you, too? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's in a little bit of a different pool. He, he works in college athletics for Temple right now. So, I, I mean, once you take that path, you really can't. Talk the the kind of competitors. Yeah, yeah, you, you really can't talk. Not, yeah. not even really the competitors part of it, but yeah. the way you know you don't really want to judge a school that that could be a potential job opportunity for you. That that when you're in college athletics, it's it's a really condensed kind of uh, environment. Everybody knows everybody, and there's always that compliance piece involved, which I don't really think we talk enough about that how it, how impactful those people that work in those athletic departments are, and how much influence they have on the way a program is run. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. But for those that haven't caught the Inside the Bag, the new show with you and Ahmed, what, what's the different, what's the spinoff, the thing that you guys bring to Maryland Athletics? Yeah, I think it's it's that recruiting piece of it. That That is our focus of the show is what's going on in the inside, where Maryland's outreach is, how they're bringing in new players from the local area, what their take on that is, and when you look at the basketball recruiting aspect, what the changes are with Coach Willard, how they're going to approach it. You know, there was a lot of judgment on Mark Turgeon for the way he recruited this area or the right. way that the lack of that, and Ahmed and I are just trying to bring that perspective of what's going on and who are they reaching out to, how serious are they when names get thrown out, and what that move is towards them, what's the angle that they're taking on those players. I love it. Well, you got a couple of fans here in the show, so we appreciate you guys doing that to yeah. work together. Uh, let's talk a little turfs, man. Let's talk what everybody's here to see. We kick it off with the fresh news that Maryland and head coach Mike Loxley have agreed to a new contract, keeping him in College Park until at least 2026. Contract kicks in a maximum of two additional years if Maryland wins seven games in 2022 and 2023. But stability for a program that struggled with that since Friedgen's departure. Yeah, I think that you hit the nail on the head right there. It's stability. You see the progress from Maryland year over year. And look, a lot of things have changed. The transfer portal has, in a lot of minds, negatively affected this team over this past offseason. They've had some struggles keeping guys in that a lot of people thought were going to be that foundation piece. But the coaching staff, the continuity of it is something that you can't stress enough. I mean, we saw a lot of turnover during the Durkin era and a lot of turnover in the locks area. Assistants are always trying to move, trying to climb that ladder. So having that guy at the top, you guys just talked about it with Ellis McKinney for a while, getting that consistency, that same message that goes into players year after year, that development piece that happens when you have that coach with that strong mind that has an idea of what this program can be. It's from this area. He understands what this program needs to be to sell to the recruits in this area. So when you talk about it, we're looking at a team that just won a bowl game after some of its darkest days in this program's right. history or its darkest days in that. You have to try and continue that. Even though you might not love everything that's going on, Maryland's at a disadvantage in a lot of spaces, especially monetarily when it comes to paying assistance. you got to keep that guy at the top. Keep it going. And there's the Look at kind of what that cap on this program is. And Maryland's targeting to take steps towards competing in this conference. So I think it's obviously the right move and a much needed move. Yeah. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 
Big Dog One. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, obviously just what, what needed to be done. And then obviously, you know, like you said, you know, the Maryland job when Lofty came in is a lot different, than, in my mind, just what other coaches, when they step into new jobs year one, I mean, it's not the same as, you know, Shane Beamer at South Carolina. You know, I think right. Loxley, when he came in, he had to do so much from, a, you know, just like a respect standpoint, a, a integrity standpoint. Right. Um, and then we talked about, obviously, Jones Hill House. A lot of that, especially the funding, those last 12 months or so, a lot of that was spearheaded by Loxley. Uh, I think just being able to restore the, the respect around the program, uh, changing the tune from local recruits, and by doing it, uh, having, like we've seen all through spring practice, having just high school after high school after high school come on campus and just see, it doesn't matter if the guy is gonna be someone you recruit, or just someone that's you know friends of someone that's gonna you're gonna recruit. Yeah. Just creating that, that the, the the third party validation through the, the youth uh, football uh, locally. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Well, let's talk a little bit about this contract, right? Because it's it's pretty unique in the way that it's structured. Tell us a little bit about the details, Ahmed, on it's this contract. Smart. Yeah. Uh, so he the the first incentive is uh, he will get a hundred thousand dollar bonus if he hits seven wins, and then an uh, additional hundred thousand for each win after that. Um, and he'll get an opportunity to, um, yeah, obviously that $4 million base salary puts him in probably in the middle of the pack of the Big Ten right now, uh, salary-wise. Uh, but obviously, like we said, you know, uh, if Merrill wins seven games in 2022, he gets a one-year extension. If he wins seven in 23, he gets a one-year extension. If he wins seven in 2023, but not in 2022, then he gets a two-year extension. So I think a lot of it is just um, the showing that it's stability. I mean, Loxley, like he said last year, you know, getting to a bowl game, that was step one, but then getting consistently to a bowl game, that's the next step, making fans and, and recruits know that Maryland football is synonymous with bowl game. Exactly. Um, so that's why when you look at the, 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 the contract and the incentives, um, that makes a very clear uh, answer as to what the next step is for the program. Um, so there's no denying that. Mason, do you like the way that that contract's laid out? Or? Yeah, I think it's the right way to do it, and especially when you look at where Maryland is in terms of attendance, in terms of bringing in money. This program's successful when the team wins. People will come here to see their their school play games that are meaningful. So when you start to structure that for giving additional money for each win after a certain point, that's when you'll see the stadium full. That's when you'll see donors come back to this program. And that's when you'll see that engagement that we all talk about on our respective shows all the time is how do you get more people to be proud of what Maryland is and to come out on Saturdays? And the answer is around here. We all know this area. It's win. Right. So when Maryland wins, they got to pay the coaches more to bring that because, you know, Mike Loxley's a very, very well-known coach in the coaching circles. Other schools will be after him the minute that this program really starts to take off. And when you start to do that, Maryland's going to have to pay more year in, year out to him. And right now you saw that, you know, he's getting paid close to the bottom of the pack. Okay, you start making that progress. You see what Kevin Willard got. Immediately, while Mike Loxley might love Maryland, coaching is a very, very cutthroat industry. Oh, yeah, and people 100%. are going to say, hey, Willard's making this much, or hey, you know, you see what all these other coaches in the Big Ten are. I need to get to that level. Maryland stepped up and did that. So as they win, they're going to have to pay more to keep them around. Yeah, you're not going to have to outbid people, but you're going to have to match the bids of people. You have to, you know, the, the, the love only gives you so much. I love how it's set up. I hope he gets about one or two hundred thousand dollars bonus this year, depending on the bowl game count. So I don't really know that part of it, whether that's the count of that seven wins. Uh, and, and just really smart to automatically extend it to get those years, because if we're headed in the right track, which is these winning seasons, why would you not be extending him? To have that automatic extension at that same number that wouldn't grow, it's already locked in, I think it's a really smart way to do it. Yeah, and then again, like you said, you know, if you're Maryland, if, if you're Maryland and you're getting to that seven wins, six wins each season, um, and lastly, you know, just him as a coach, you know, we've talked about it countless times, but he's a guy that, uh, obviously, this is the job that he wants for. He's not going to, you know, get a little bit of success and, like, DJ Dirk and look to, to leave elsewhere. I mean, this is kind of where he wants to, to, to build it and wants to build his, his pedigree. So I think um, as long as as long as long he's able to hit that, um, he, it's pretty clear what the expectation is for him. So he does that. He, he is a pretty safe right now.